For much of the past century, conservatives in America largely fused the ideas, means, and political factions of two distinct worldviews, traditional social arrangements informed by religious faith and a free enterprise form of market capitalism. Now an old idea has new currency under the banner of national conservatism. Contrasted with more traditional American conservative ideology from leaders like Buckley and Goldwater, national conservatives are more willing, even eager, to use the federal government to implement their vision of America through far-reaching policy changes. Today, critics of the free market say capitalism has subverted democracy by favoring billionaires and elites who gain the system and create poverty, insecurity, pollution, and collapsing public services for everyone else. It is a strange time. Progressives and national conservatives advocate similar economic controls and limits on capitalism in the name of more democracy. While these tropes fit nicely on bumper stickers, it would turn the actual operation of American democracy on its head and shift more control over everyday life to unelected, oftentimes unaccountable, government administrators. It's important to understand that more democracy, as they would define it, means elected politicians forcing on each of us their vision of a good society. They want industrial policy to use government to fix our manufacturing industry. They advocate for antitrust regulation to punish and break apart companies they deem too big and profitable. We must, they contend, hand over large swathes of the economy to the government to ensure fairness and equality. But our democratic system is constrained by design for this very reason. It's to prevent what philosopher John Stuart Mill called a tyranny of the majority. It's why we have a Bill of Rights, to limit the power of government actors, even when urged on by a majority. In contrast to more democracy, the American heritage of free markets is among the truest expressions of our democracy the way the founders intended. Free people, empowered with property rights and numerous protections against fraud, are able to make their own economic decisions, which has led to the greatest outpouring of peace and prosperity the world has known. Their calls for economic controls and charges against unfettered capitalism ring hollow. They point to economically depressed areas of the country as evidence of capitalism's inherent inequality, but fail to see how the market is far from unfettered. Today we are governed by a system of super statutes, an administrative constitutionalism. It often ignores the requirements of the Constitution to regulate virtually every aspect of our lives. In a way, we're already halfway to the goalposts that progressives and national conservatives want to reach. Respect for market processes, for capitalism in all its dynamic and unpredictable ways, keeps government out of inherently private decisions. Markets are as much cooperative as competitive. They link each of us daily in a complex web of suppliers, vendors, employers, co-workers, investors, and other self-organized elements of society, so each individual has multiple chances to give voice to their preferences. What to buy, when to sell, what type of work to do. Billionaires, where they fit in this chain, are still responsive to it. Bureaucrats, whom critics of capitalism want to empower, are not. Where it is healthy, capitalism prevents government from entering into areas unsuited to political administration and encourages the development of values like trust that bind us together. It is why market capitalism has been a pillar of conservatism for decades. And it's also why the emergence of national conservatism should be more accurately deemed not as far-reaching progressivism. It's not conservatism, nor does it contain within itself limits on government expansion into our lives.